Hey friends, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and we are going to draw a pinwheel together. You can see that I have my paper turned horizontally and I'm gonna just pick a spot and I'm gonna start with a circle. This is the center of our pinwheel. I'm gonna be drawing a landscape behind my pinwheel, so you will see that in a minute. We're gonna go ahead and draw four lines coming out of the center of the circle we just drew and it's gonna make a T shape. You can see that I am not drawing my lines through the circle that I drew, but I'm going to go right up to the edge. Now we are going to draw some smaller lines making an X. Again, not going through the center of that circle, but just going all the way up to the edge. Next, we're gonna connect the short line to the long line next to it by using a curved line. Now we're gonna be drawing a straight line going from the bottom of that curved line to the other long line that we drew. And you're gonna see that this kind of creates a folded over paper look that you would see on a real pinwheel. So it kind of creates a box in the background and you see how it matches up with my actual pinwheel and that gives it the folded over paper look. Now we need to draw the stick for our pinwheel. I'm going to draw mine going straight down and I'm not going all the way to the bottom of my paper because I am going to draw a landscape. And here is my first part of the landscape. I'm gonna start with a curvy hill and I'm gonna do another one that overlaps in the back and I'm working from foreground to middle ground to background. After I draw the hills, I'm going to add some mountains to my landscape. You certainly do not have to do a landscape in the background of your pinwheel drawing. If you want to create something else, you are welcome to do that. Um, you have all the creative freedom to be able to create any type of pinwheel drawing that you want to. If you want to just create some patterns or different types of lines in the background, you are more than welcome to do that. I added a sun, or it could even be a moon if you want to, setting behind the mountains, and I'm going to add some more over here, making sure that I don't draw my mountain lines cutting through my pinwheel because they are in the background, so they would not be overlapping on the front of my pinwheel. I'm gonna add a little bit of shading on my pinwheel to show where the paper would fold over and create a shadow. You certainly don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it because I think it makes my pinwheel look a little bit more realistic and gives it that added detail. Sometimes it's easier to turn your paper to work with your drawing so that your hand is not laying on top of all of your beautiful lines. I am drawing with a black crayon so that you guys can see, but you should probably draw with a pencil so that if you make a mistake, you can erase it and you don't have to start all over. Okay, it is time for the best part. We get to add color to our drawing. I'm using watercolors today, but if you guys want to use other paints or even crayons, markers, colored pencils, any other coloring supply that you have at home, you are more than welcome to do that. I'm adding some cotton candy skies for the sunset behind the mountains. And as you know, I love different colors, so I am not necessarily going to paint my landscape to look realistic. I'm gonna add some purple and blue mountains and some beautiful green hills, and you can add any colors that you want to. Don't forget that your background does not have to be a landscape. You can create any type of background for your pinwheel that you want to make. I also added a few little details on my pinwheel, some stripes and polka dots. You can do that too if you want. And here you go, the finished product. Super quick and easy. I cannot wait to see what you guys create.